Hey everybody on YouTube. So with the release of Fallout 4 coming in about a month, I'm going to go back and look at my first Bethesda game, the first game I played from that company, and that's the Elder Scrolls 4 Oblivion. So this isn't going to be a big review or anything, it's just going to look back at some of the things I liked about the game, more like a retrospective like my last video. So let's get started. Okay, before we get started, I just want to let you guys know I have been sick, so if my voice isn't 100%, that's why. The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion was released on March 20th, 2006. Oblivion is the fourth entry to the Elder Scrolls series, and for many it's the black sheep of the series. But for me it was the first I played, and it really opened my eyes to PC gaming. Prior to 2006, my family had exclusively used Macintosh computers, and having just gotten my first real job, I could afford to buy my own computer. So while staying at my friend's place that summer, we walked to the local GameStop, he bought Oblivion in the guidebook, installed it on his gateway, and when we loaded it up, the game looked something like this. And even after watching my friend play Oblivion on potato settings, I was convinced I had to make a PC just to play this game. I had never seen open world gaming that immersive, so I saved up that summer, built my first PC, got the game and the guidebook, and have since put well over 500 hours into it. So in this video, I'm just going to take a look back about what makes this one of my favorite games of all time. Among the many things that got me to buy this game were the visuals. It's easy to forget, but back in 2006, you just didn't have games with the kind of open landscapes that Oblivion has. It wasn't just that you could look at a great sunset or great overlook, it was that you could go to the mountain across the valley. You could travel to the city gates from miles away. Funny enough, when I got the game, I didn't understand the fast travel system because I never read the tutorials, so I probably went through 20 hours of gameplay exclusively walking or riding horseback to each location, and that I think really helped the game be so immersive. However, that's one of the big mistakes Bethesda made in my opinion. In Oblivion, allowing fast travel to every city right away makes the game seem much smaller and doesn't create the need to explore like in Fallout 3 or Skyrim. But if you ignore the fast travel and ride to most cities, you see some great views and you hear the amazing soundtrack. Just walking around the world and hearing the music play is incredible. It really helps bring the world to life, more than most game soundtracks do. However, the presentation wasn't all good. I'm not going to lie that even when the game came out, the faces of the NPCs and the character creation part of the game were really lacking. The characters just kind of look like they have Play-Doh faces. It's weird when the rest of the game got it so right, and they got the character parts so wrong. What's even more odd about the faces is that they licensed technology for them. The software is called FaceGen, and it certainly was an odd choice for a fantasy game with many different races. The only thing that saved the NPC design was the fact that some of the title characters obviously had more work done on them, so they don't look so bad. Also, all the NPCs are fully voice acted, and the acting is quite good, even with some of the more cheesy dialogue. Stop right there, criminal scum! The limited number of voices is definitely noticeable, as you will hear the same person speaking for an entire gender of a race, but considering the time when this came out, it's forgivable. When I first played the game, I was more amazed at the sheer amount of dialogue, and was less worried about if each voice was unique. Overall, the game's presentation really holds up. There are still some load skips and occasionally some bad textures and object pop in, but the game has some great vistas and lighting effects that still impress me today. A great presentation doesn't really mean much unless the game you're playing has a worthwhile story or some amazing gameplay. And though I don't think Oblivion is a masterpiece of story or gameplay, it does both pretty well, especially the story. The main story of Oblivion is decent. Following Martin Septim, the illegitimate son of Emperor Uriel Septim, Martin, after his father's death, tries to gain control of the Imperial Throne to stop the spread of the Daedric Prince, Mayrus Dagon. It's a standard fantasy fair and features some cool locations, and has a few good twists and battles, but honestly I've only ever beat the main quest once. The really good story parts of Oblivion are in the side quests. The Dark Brotherhood, the Fighters Guild, the Arena, and the Thieves Guild are just some of the major quest lines available in Oblivion, and they're all really good. The game also features dozens of random side quests all over the world, from assisting a paranoid wood elf. I'm not a violent person, but I can only be pushed so far. I'll never serve you! To a town where everybody's gone invisible, the game has so many memorable quests. The trolls that the thief painted seem to have turned on their creator and killed him. In many ways, this is where the game outshines its sequel Skyrim. As much as I love Skyrim, its faction quest lines are just not as interesting and don't seem nearly as long as the ones in Oblivion. Quests like the Dark Brotherhood and Fighters Guild in Oblivion have more interesting stories that feel more grounded in the world, creating an overall better atmosphere than Skyrim. Though I have issues with a lot of the gameplay elements in Oblivion, there are a few things I wish Bethesda had kept for Skyrim. 
One is the leveling system, and no I don't mean the actual act of leveling, cause it's confusing and doesn't work well. But what I like better in Oblivion is the fact that you had to find a place to sleep to contemplate on what you've learned to level up. Many people found this annoying, but for me it was a better role playing experience because it forced you to return to town or your house to level up, and gave the sleep mechanic and housing more purpose. I actually kind of enjoyed renting out a room to level up, it just felt more like a classic RPG for some reason. One other gameplay element that Oblivion got right over Skyrim is vampires. Vampires in Oblivion work much more like they do in classic literature. You must travel at night, and sunlight can actually kill you, instead of just giving you a simple debuff like in Skyrim. Also, if you don't drink blood for several days, you gain more powers, but townfolk will become suspicious, and if you go too long without drinking blood, townspeople will straight up attack you on sight. No! No! Stay away from me! Skyrim also does this, but to a lesser degree, and becoming a full vampire seems to have little effect on your access to towns and quests. Also, the process of ridding yourself of vampirism is more difficult, making turning into a vampire a choice with real consequence, rather than just an easy repeatable quest where you can become cured easily like in Skyrim. Player housing is one of my favorite parts about Oblivion and Bethesda games in general. It was so cool when I learned you could buy a house and put all your stuff exactly where you wanted it. I know to some people it sounds silly, but for me the player housing experience really grounds you in the world. It makes a part of the world yours, and also through getting bigger and better houses and upgrading them, it's a visual reminder of your character's own arc. And in a role playing game like Oblivion, it's important to make the world seem real, and the player housing really did that for me. I can still remember the first time buying the one room shack on the waters of the Imperial City, and how that really pulled me into the world, and how once I had the mansion in Skinsgrad, I could see all the rare items I had found and know that I had started out in a prison and was now the richest man around. All the other Bethesda games after Oblivion also have player housing in some way, but for whatever reason, Oblivion's always felt the best. There was just so much choice, each home feels unique, and getting the gold to buy them was a pretty big challenge compared to getting a house in Fallout 3 or Skyrim. I wish more games took a hint from Bethesda and included customizable player housing. It's a simple thing that adds so much immersion to a game. So those are just some of the reasons The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion is one of my favorite games of all time. I've played a lot of video games and there are countless ones with more technical polish and have more developed stories, but Oblivion transported me to a new world. I never felt like an observer or visitor, I felt like I was a part of the world and maybe that's why I keep going back to it year after year. The last two weeks have been really fun and I wish I had the time to keep playing. I know Oblivion isn't the greatest game of all time and some of its odd quirks don't hold up as well today, but for me, it'll always be a classic. Okay, that was my video for this week, I hope you liked it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't think you know what to do, you know, hit that button to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one in the future. And hopefully in two weeks I'll be able to pull out a little Fallout 3 video just before the release of Fallout 4. But we'll see how it goes. See you in the next one.